Hello everybody and welcome to your next tutorial. Um the last tutorial was um we learned about how to do sprite animation, but I was very vague and explained the game time class, so I decided I'm gonna elaborate more on that. So what the game time does is that it adds all the timers um required um for the game. Like XNA also has time span which could be used to actually figure out what happens in a certain time frame. But the game time is basically mainly used for um frames per second. And um so w what we're going to figure out is why we do what we do with game time. So before I set the move speed to 500, but I've reset it to 200 and I hope you have your project open from the last tutorial. So right now we in our draw method, we have game time now in the parameters. And I've created a sprite batch a draw string. I added the main font into the game one and I made it a static a variable. And then in in the text I put game time dot elapsed game time dot total seconds dot two string to change it to a string type to display the text. And and, and I think that's a really cool feature with C sharp that a lot of other languages should, a lot of other languages should adapt. And uh, the position and the color, the text color that we're going to be doing. So, uh, let us run this program right now to see what we get. So, as you can see, my it, it often changes very quickly, but the average rate, um, the average FPS is at zero point zero one six 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 seven. Now, um, you might be saying, well, doesn't it say game time dot elapse time dot total seconds? Well, the reason why we had to change this to float is because it doesn't give us a whole number. It gives us a float or a decimal number. Um, by default, it's double, but we had to just cast it to float in order to accommodate um, since vector 2 is our default float. And I believe um, we could also put F at the end to make it a float. I'm not sure. Or oh, actually, we can't, cause it's not a numerical value; it's an actual name. So we have to cast it to float. But basically, um, basically, if say it's say the update time is 0 0.1, then it updates at a tenth of a second. So uh, sometimes computers are really fa well today in today's day and age, computers are um really fast, and they will update many times a second. And normally for a game. Um, when a game is played, a uh, game usually runs uh, 60 frames per second. So, um, you're wondering, why do we do it like this? How come we just can't have a steady move speed? Well, okay, I have set the move speed to 200, meaning that if I was to uh, forget about this, if I was to comment that out and put this, then if we press the left key, the player will move 200 pixels every single update. For this, we we set it that we move 200 pixels, approximately 200 pixels every second. Now, why do we do, do this? Well, okay, say say we have uh we have two computers. One computer updates at one frame per second, and another computer updates at um two f um one frame every two seconds. Okay, so uh let us look at it this way. So if our move speed is 200. Then for the newer, for the first computer, um, the position, the player position will update at 200 times 1, which will be the total seconds, because it updates every second, approximately every second. So when you press equal, then the player will actually move 200 spaces to whichever direction you specified. Now say that on the slower grade of computer, it updates every 2 uh, seconds. So the the player's position still has to update at the it has to be at the same approximate location. So in order to do this, that's why we have frames per second. So if the slower computer updates every two seconds, then game time dot elapsed game time dot total seconds will be equal to two. So it'd be two hundred times two, and then therefore the position will move approximately four hundred spaces in the direction that you're going. 
so then when you're running it on either different spaces um, different types of computers it will end up in the same position as you will as fast computers now the slower your computer it will be jerky it will be jerky um, movement because it, it will look as though the player is jumping right uh, that's only if it's on super slow computers but on general computers today you shouldn't notice a different in the mo the difference in the move speed of the actual character or the move speed of the animation or anything because the game time will keep it at refreshing at the same rate as every other computer so um if just to review again so if the move speed is 5 and the computer updates at 5 frames per second then every single second the player will move 5 spaces to the right so but if a computer moves at 5 um if a computer updates every 2 seconds then it will move 10 spaces every 2 seconds so it will end up in the same position right if that makes sense to you because the first one will move 5 spaces in 1 second and the next second it will move another 5 spaces equaling to 10 seconds 10 spaces the slower computer will just after 2 seconds move the bo uh, move the player 10 spaces to that current direction so I hope that makes sense to you and that's the reason why we incorporate game time into our programs so if we were to look at it on a calculator my computer updates at approximately 0 0.146 um, and a 7 so if I look at the move speed I do 200 times 0 0.166667 and put equals and then therefore my player moves ap approximately 33 spaces to whichever direction that my player is facing so um, that will approximate to so that means on any single computer then the player will approximately move a 33 spaces to whichever direction that you're facing so I hope this tutorial uh, makes sense to you instead of doing the regular way the regular way is just the amount of pixels you move this is the amount of this is basically speed per second so hopefully this made sense to you and I hope fully you guys grasp the concept if you don't just comment below or post in the community on my website so thanks for watching and bye